mean, you think Arabs make up 20% of Muslims, so you know, there's not even as many Arabs, I think, in the whole world as there is in Indonesia. So, I mean, Islam's for everyone, and if you just look at the map of the world, it's every colour, every creed, every nationality. I went through a period of about five or six years of my life where basically if you were to look at me you'd say he's a scum of the earth and that's the way I was treated and that's what I was and it was from my own hand. Uh, I destroyed my family, I destroyed myself, I destroyed anything that I ever care about and I kept on going down and down and further and further down in life until I was at the bottom of the barrel. I was pretty much the worst people, the worst people and you know, certain things happen to me that, you know, I don't want to elaborate on too much further here, you know, because as a Muslim, a Muslim's meant to conceal his sins, and I'm not too proud of how I used to be. But there come a point where I asked God to save me from what was going to happen to me. I was either going to get killed or certain things, and I said to myself, I'm going to become, I have to do it now, mate. There's no turning back, Muhammad, you know, you've come to this point in your life where... You know, last part of has got almighty shiny, you know. I must admit, I did have um, a lot of the, the believed and a lot of the negative stereotypes about Islam, such as sort of the irrational, the terrorist, um, misogynist type um, attitude of Muslims. And when I found this was, was not the case, um, that it, it, it spurned more interest. And well, what else don't I know? And the Muslims actually, that I met, like the first time I actually had that human contact with Islam and Muslims, they were actually some of the the finest human beings that I'd met, and, and it was it was quite shocking to me actually. I was listening to a um, ABC news radio, and they said they said that a Queensland company had uh, just marketed uh, a special honey, um, a medicinal honey, because uh, honey has a lot of antibacterial properties. Okay? Two days before that, I'd been given my first Quran. All right? That afternoon, um, I thought to myself, oh, that's interesting about the honey, etc. That afternoon, I went home and I said, oh, let's have a look at this Quran. And I opened it up to Surah the B, and I apologise, I don't remember the verse, but the very th thing I read when I got home was... And that, that, that blew me away, I mean, wow. Um. If I ever find I need to cleanse my heart or, you know, soothe my senses, I'll just read the Quran. Before I came to Islam, you know, what you see on the news and, and what you hear, it's, it's, it's the same thing that someone who's ignorant of the religion and doesn't really pick up a book and start reading about the religion would have. Like those same ideas, you know, terrorists, just Arabs and so forth, blah, blah, blah. So it wasn't too good of a view, but the fact that I, I knew some Muslims kind of balanced that out. There was a time when I was just doing some vacation employment at uni and um, you know I, there was no nowhere else to pray so I just got up and said okay I need to pray and I just prayed you know right on the side there and after when I finished praying they started asking about Islam and it's an opportunity I guess to to tell them more about Islam um, initially they'll be like you know they don't know how to take it like because they don't want to say anything wrong but it's a matter of saying step, being steadfast and making yourself known as a Muslim so people would ask you because I think a lot of people are curious just exactly what Islam is and if they find out you're a Muslim then they'll tend to have so far personally my, my experience have all been positive so they've all been like you know oh, just what is Islam why do you pray etc etc uh, Islam began in Indonesia through tradesmen the honesty of these tradesmen in their business dealings and their manners sort of made them stand out in that society and so when the message of Islam came it was easy for them to accept. 
Uh, previously, Indonesians worshipped idols, which meant when Islam came to them, it made sense to them. And that they realized that that gods cannot just be carved out of stone or wood, and that God is much greater than that. Um, Islam is one, and that's what I really love about Islam. It, you know, it doesn't matter what colour you are, it doesn't matter what religion you come from, um, it invites everybody in, and it's very different to what um, the Jewish people teach you as well. So um, that was another reason why I actually came here, because um, in like a sense, it, it sort of makes sense because it starts from Adam and it goes all the way to the last prophet and that involves everyone, it involves all religions that believe in God. One thing that really stood out was when um, they got somebody in and it was like a young boy and he was, he was actually reading the Quran in Arabic and it started to, I started to feel it in my heart when he was reading it in Arabic um, and to me like I don't even understand it I was like I was actually like wanting to cry I was actually thinking to stop stop it because I'm gonna cry in a second so like that's when I knew well definitely I feel it in my heart if I can if I can feel this yeah a lot of people don't like change but if Islam was, if Muslims lived the way the Prophet Islam lived, how could anyone not accept Islam? And this is the, the most important thing that, that Muslims hold the torch and they must, you know, show the rest of the world that, you know, this is how Muslims are, this is how Muslims should be. One of those things where I'd left home early and had, you know, I was, had a good upbringing and I knew right from wrong but I wanted to get a taste of life and, you know, alhamdulillah Allah saved me, you know, at a young age rather than going into the bad things in life.